Good Sunday afternoon, church. Um, Counted a privilege and an honor to be with you today. Uh, pray that the Lord would use us. Uh, we do not feel very good in body, so uh, pray for us that we can be a, a witness unto you, and that we can um, give you what God has laid on our hearts today. Um, so we're going to start out. The scripture today is about being a load-bearing wall and how that uh, we need to rely on one another, that we need each other's strength. But um, I got a song on my heart that's kind of my testimony, so uh, just listen to the words to it, and um, I'll uh, do my best. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah, and Paul preached that all is lost save knowing Christ. Little John said he is precious. By leaning on his bosom, so for a moment may I humbly testify. Did I mention that I love him? How I worship and adore him. When I could see no way, He makes a way. And did I mention that He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me? I love Him, and that's all. I want to say How many sermons Can be preached About this Jesus How many songs Can be sung About God's Word there are not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all the Savior has done. And did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him When I can see no way He makes a way And did I mention that He's been faithful To every promise He's ever made me I love him, and that's all I want to say. Did I mention that he's been faithful to every promise he's ever made me? I love him, and that's all. I want to say I love him and that's all I want to say Amen
Hey man, what a beautiful song, beautifully written and um, heartfully sung. There's not much on the uh, quality there, but the Bible said make a joyful noise and I, I do love the Lord. He's been so good to me. We're going to be taking our scripture lesson today from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. And um, one of the things about the Old Testament is... Uh, it's things that happen. It's historical events that you and I can apply to our lives and that we can learn from. And my dad told me a long time ago, he said, son, if you can learn from other people's mistakes, you'll be a lot better off in life. And I took that to heart. And uh, then when I uh, become converted and was a Christian and gave Jesus my heart, I began to read in the Bible about some mistakes that people made. And um, I don't always uh, make the right decisions, uh, my friend. I'll tell you that right now. I'm uh, I'm as frail as, as as anybody else out there that might be listening, and I do make mistakes. But uh, thank God, I've got a Savior who loves me, a friend who walks beside me, and somebody that is always there and taking care of me. The Bible says in First Samuel twenty five verses uh, fifteen through sixteen it says, "But the men were very good unto us, and they were not, uh, and we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when they were in the fields. When we were in the fields, it says, and they were a wall. There's that word wall. They were a wall unto us both by night and day, all the while that we." were with them keeping the sheep. This is a story about David and his men at a place near uh, Carmel. There was a very rich man, a foolish man whose name was Nabal. And uh, Nabal had uh, several hundred sheep uh, out on the uh, pasture field, up on the plains and um, the meadows. And David and his men, while they were in captivity, they, and that's one of the things I believe personally that uh, when the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, I believe that's why it is because David loved the sheep. He loved the sheep. They weren't even in his, his sheep. And David and his men, roughly between four and 600 men gathering together with David at this time, rejects, outcasts, off scourge of the earth, uh, debtors, uh, those who couldn't pay their taxes, those who... Um, uh, just simply did not want to, uh, that the society did, had given up on them. And they uh, chose to be with David. And uh, David, in uh, the spirit of God being upon him, turned these uh, few hundred men into an, uh, a small army. And uh, my goodness, they was taking out thousands and tens of thousands of the enemy whenever the Lord was upon them. But they were in hiding from King Saul and uh, were in Carmel. And Nabal had his men and their sheep up on this hillside uh, out in the plains and everything and his shepherds. And when it came time, it was customary in the Bible uh, whenever that the, um, the, the master would send his sheep down for the shearing and they would harvest the wool off of those uh, lambs and off of those sheep. It was customary to pay a percentage unto um, anyone who had part in uh, the preparation of that wool or the reservation of it. And in this case, David and his men had helped reserve or preserve the, uh, the, the wool because these lambs were never hurt by enemy. Nobody dared come upon uh, Nabal's men because David and his men were there and they were afraid of them. And uh, there was no lions, no bears. Uh, we all know the story how David delivered his uh, father's sheep out of the mouth of the lion and the bear. So the men were, were testifying and they was telling Abigail, who was Nabal's wife, because David grew angry because Nabal said, who is David that I should pay him homage? Who is he that I should give him a, a, a penny? And so David was going to go up to Carmel and take Nabal's life and, uh, you know, slay him because of his disrespect of the customary law and uh, customs of that time. And uh, but he said here that they were his men were testifying and they told Abigail, they said they were a wall unto us. Have you ever been in a circumstance in your life, my friend, when you had that one person you could call on and they were a wall unto you? They they stood by you and they held you and and. Um, I remember as a 30-some, 
odd year old man uh, while my mother was still alive. And uh, I was going through some trying times and had a had some things that was eating away at me and I didn't know what to do about it. And I remember going to my mom and and asking her and and was so broken as a as a man. Now mind you, I was a man. I was not a uh, a high school dropout or anything like that. I had was married and had children and was just so broken hearted and went to my mother, knelt down in front of her. Now my mom at this time was was uh was passing with cancer. She had had lung cancer and was passing away. And I remember kneeling down in front of the couch where she was kind of sitting and laying down at the same time. She was sit, sitting up with her feet on the couch and she didn't have no hair. And I remember laying my head in her lap and I felt safe. And I, I, I don't know why that was. I mean, she was mom and, uh, you know, she's probably 95 pounds if we were lucky. And, um, I remember that mom held me and just rubbed her hands across my beard and across my, my head and, and held me and said, son, it'll be okay. And that gave me comfort. She was a wall under me and it just a little tiny wall, but she was, she was a wall and she was able to give me the strength that I needed and, and the help that I needed to go on. Do you have anybody in your life that you've ever, you know, had them be a wall for you? mom or your dad or maybe your spouse at a at a time of need or maybe even a son or a daughter just a, a good friend um i've had honestly i've had probably two or three men uh, in my life that i felt like that if i was a, a jonathan that they were my david or if i was a david they were my jonathan and i, I thank god for placing those men in my life that I had a wall that would protect me and comfort me in times of need. And we find also that, you know, this is us. We are a wall. And sometimes I, I maybe a couple times in my life, God has allowed me to be that wall for somebody else. And I appreciate that. I love the Lord so much for using me. And I feel so unworthy, but he uses me. And that's what I want to be uh uh, want to have happen in my life and you know Christ also he built the church and and we are the supporting walls in that and we find that scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 he said and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it we a wall a load-bearing wall inside of a church is one that carries the the weight it's one that carries uh the structure and uh, it's the support, um, you know, and we need load bearing walls in churches. And sometimes they're in the form of a, a, a little uh, praying mother, you know, like my mom was. And sometimes they're in the form of a, a, a God fearing, uh, you know, fire breathing, uh, devil stomping preacher. Uh, I remember them growing up and I, I, you know, sometimes they may be that uh, that quiet little a choir leader or that Sunday school teacher, but God wants us to be the, he said, upon this rock, Peter, he says, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But you and I, my friend, are the load bearing and the supporting walls within that church. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, those loads can be, uh, uh, you know, kind of feel like we're going to be crushed underneath it. And I like what the Bible says that in the book of Psalms, uh, he says, uh, Psalms 55 and 22, he says, cast thy burden upon the Lord and your weight, your, your, uh, uh, your, your, uh, um, your burden that you're carrying. He says to cast it upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee and he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Uh, there's help in Jesus Christ and there's, uh, days that uh, you feel like you're not going to get through it, but I've got news for you. You you can't get through it. But because of Jesus Christ, we can get through it. And because we have him in our lives and he is our uh, help, he is our support uh, in that load-bearing wall, that, that uh, you know, he says that burden, that burden that we're carrying, that, that roof, that ceiling, that uh, the attic, the, the second story, third story, sometimes... We don't know how many stories this building may be, and you're that load-bearing wall in the basement. 
And it feels like, you know, without you, that would all crumble. And we need to be that load bearing wall. It doesn't mean that you're always going to be popular. A lot of people will take you for granted. Uh, and I remember my dad and I've got, you can see behind me right there, that, that uh, big pillar uh, is a, uh, it's a pine, uh, a white pine tree that I cut down. There's one on the other side of my uh, tent. They've got a 10 foot opening here behind me. I'm sitting in the kitchen and the uh, living room is behind me. Uh, but those supports uh, are in there uh, mostly for cosmetics, uh, but they do have some support to them. My dad had a uh, a big, big old, uh, it was a 2 by 6 but it was a Amish cut 2 by 6 So it was actually like two and a half by, you know, seven. It was a monstrous beam that we, when we was working on my dad's house, we, we had that, slid that support in and it was holding up the upstairs uh, while we tore off the roof and put a second story on our house. And... In the process of things, we ended up leaving that beam there because it had carried so much weight. And it was splintery. It was rough cut sawmill lumber, but it made the best scratching post ever was. And uh, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I showed my grandkids when my back itches, I'll, you know, pull my shirt up and I'll back up next to that beam there behind me and I'll rub my back in, on it. And, uh, but between my dad and uh, me and my brothers, we had that beam in that house rubbed smooth. We sanded it with our skin because, but you know, there's a lot of people who, 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 who uh, take you for, for granted and that's okay. My friend, it'll all come out in the end. You may be in the basement supporting the whole house, but because you're that load bearing wall without you, it would all fail. And certainly without Jesus Christ, there, it, it would, it would all it just, just, uh, uh, it'd be a shambles. It would just come to, to naught. And we see here that some loads can be pretty heavy. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, uh, Jesus, he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. That heavy laden, that, that uh, weight that has been laid on your wall. He said, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for, my, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And then he says, And my burden is light. Now, that doesn't mean... Um, you know, I, I remember, maybe some of you can remember this too, uh, going back a few years when TV used to be good and it wasn't so uh, vile and um, so, uh, uh, wow, it's t today it's just uh, it's treacherous. But I remember, you guys remember watching Little House on the Prairie? And there was an episode on Little House on the Prairie where that Adam and uh, Laura had made a paper mache uh, boulder that was as big as a... a my goodness, today it would be as big as a uh, a small car, you know. And Albert acted like he was a werewolf or some kind of a creature. And uh, he grabbed that big boulder and picked it up and acted like he, he was trying to scare some bullies at school or something like that. And the little sister, Carrie, came out and she said, what are you doing with that paper mache boulder? And then they ended up beating up Albert again anyway. But, you know, when we look at life, we, we are just like Albert and like everybody else. We look at that that uh, burden that uh, is laid upon us and it feels like it is going to crush us it looks so big it looks so uh, massive that you know we we believe that we can't do it and um but you need to have faith in god and god will give you strength because he said here in matthew he said take my burden because my burden is light and you know when we take his burden upon us he automatically shares because uh, we're, we're getting into a yoke together with Jesus. A yoke is set up for a team. Uh, a yoke is meant for uh, two cattle, uh, horses or oxen or whatever that they would yoke up together. And they would uh, yoke them together and they both would pull that same load. And Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. And a lot of people, that's what the problem is today. Uh, we're, we're forgetting that that yoke is meant for two and we try to do things on our own. When Jesus Christ is right there with you, my friend, he, he's, he's right there yoked up with you, wanting to help you with that problem that you're going through and wanting to help you with your, uh, with your burden. Uh, I remember as a little boy, as a matter of fact, I was four, four and a half or five years old was uh, one of my earliest memories that I can go back to. My dad had a 1920, uh, or no, a 1929 Chevy Roadster. He had a 327 souped up engine in it and dad was always taking the motor out and working on it. Had the old rumble seat in the back of it. And I remember that dad, um, 
he took that motor out and was working on it and when that motor was out of that car it was just the front end axles and everything he picked the front of that car up and moved it around like it was a toy in the eyes of a five-year-old boy my daddy was superman and you know that was impressive to me and i always thought i had the strongest dad on the face of the planet and i still do in a lot of ways i love you dad we're here to help one another bear these burdens. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 2 through 5, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens. You say, well, I don't want to help anybody else carry their load. I can barely carry mine. Uh, you know, but by doing this, the Bible says, And so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. You're going to carry your burden no matter what. But Jesus is saying, if we help one another, there, you'll remember the old saying that says, Many hands make uh, light work. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, we could always, you know, use help. And uh, I know I've, I've met some people in my life that says, I'll just do it myself <laughs> because they're never happy with how you do it. And uh, I won't go into that, but uh, there's a lot of uh, people who can't do it by themselves and they need help. And, you know, it, it isn't that they need you to do it for them. Sometimes just you being there and, you know, helping out with a burden. Uh, my, my grandchildren want to help me sometimes do stuff and, uh, I will have them help me pack uh, sticks and stuff and rocks. Or, uh, no, I'm filling in the front, the front hill in front of my house, and they will uh, help me pitch stuff over there. And two of my little ones, uh, Mackenzie and Zayden, boy, they would just pack the biggest load they can get their hands on and brag about how big theirs was. And the two older ones, uh, you know, they'll grab a stick. <laughs> they think they're really doing something. But, you know, they really are hard workers and, you know, I can turn the tables on them and I'll say, well, you know, no, hers is bigger. You better get a bigger one. And uh, it seems to not that you put them against each other, but you cause competition and help. They get to help one another. And then I'll say, well, how about, you know, two of you grab that big rock or two of you grab that stick over there, that board and or that tree limb. And then, you know, they work together. Bear one another's burdens. When you're a load-bearing wall, sometimes it feels like you're going to crush. You're creaking beneath the weight of it all. And we need somebody to come along sometimes and help. Now, sometimes there are, and I'm saying this respectfully, I, I have a, a carpenter's background. And we used to make what's called faux walls, or uh, in the old days, we called them dummy walls. Um, and there are some that are dummy walls. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 1, through two, 1 and 2. And the Bible says, And I, brethren, uh, could not speak unto you as a spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as ye are babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. You couldn't carry the load of it. Uh, a dummy wall. You know, uh, you look like it, walk like it, but you're not it. And, you know, that's something that cannot handle the pressure of it. You can't handle the weight of that needs to be on uh, you as a load-bearing wall. So because you can't handle the weight of it, you can't do the work. Because you can't do the work, you don't get the reward. Um, you, you, a lot of people, you know, I want to do, you know, I, I want to do, I, I couldn't wait till I was big enough to drive. And then, you know, and I, I still, uh, if I'm riding with somebody, I would still rather be up front with them in the passenger seat or driving because I can't stand to ride in the back anymore. But you know, once I had achieved that, uh, still yet today, there are uh, people who do that for a living. That is, the, They are really, really good at it. We've got some truck drivers in our church, and that is their uh, bread and butter. That's how they make their living. They, uh, they drive and, you know, have been for probably most of their lives. Um, but there are others who, they, they, they couldn't drive a nail if you gave them a sledgehammer. They, 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 they can't, um, they're not able to do what somebody else can do. And that doesn't make them less of a person. It just means they're not equipped and they're not ready for the load or the task at hand. And then um, Christ, the Bible says that Christ will make us a load bearing even when we don't even know it. Uh, and we don't know how, uh, but in first Corinthians 10 verse 13, he says, there hath no temptation 
uh, taken you, but such is common unto man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted that which you are able to bear. And uh, aren't you glad for that, my friend, that he will not put more on you than what you're able to bear? Uh, so, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Um, a maker and a way of escape. Um, I've heard people say, well, God won't put more on us than what we can bear. Now, that's not entirely what it says. He says he wouldn't put more on you than what you can bear unless along with that temptation, he provides a way of escape that you could bear. Uh, and a way of escape would be, um, I remember uh, helping hang drywall and we would uh, take the drywall and uh, my wife and I, just, just me and her, and we were putting it on the ceiling of a, a little house trailer that we lived in when we first got married. And we pour Job's turkey and just trying to make a, a roof over our head for our children. And uh, I really do thank God for what we have today. But I remember that I made a uh, a stick with a little, uh, just a little shim on the end of it. And it was my escape. And uh, I remember telling my wife that when we was hanging drywall. And we would shove the drywall up and I cut that just at the right length to where we would shove it up under it and embrace it against the floor. And it helped us hold that drywall. That's my way of escape. It helped us achieve and get that piece of drywall up on the, uh, uh, the ceiling where it needed to be because I couldn't do it and she couldn't do it. Together, us with an escape, we're able to do it. And that's what God is talking about, that he would make you a way for you to be able to bear it. And then we see that out of all the load-bearing walls, when you go into a building or a structure, there'll be what we call the main uh, load-bearing wall, the main wall. And that is Jesus Christ, my friend. That's not you. That's not me. That's not any other pastor. That is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, very familiar passage of Scripture, says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered, listen, to bear the sins of many. Praise his holy name. And unto them that look unto him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Aren't you glad, my friend, that he can bear the sins of many? I, I can't, I could not, and neither could you, so let's stop fooling ourselves ever thinking that we have enough righteousness about us that we could pay for one of our sins. We, we can't do it. You can't pay for your sins. I can't pay for my sins. But Jesus Christ has the ability to pay for your sins and my sins and everybody else's sins, past, present, and future, because of his precious blood. And if we don't have that, uh, then we would most like most men, we would be so miserable, you know, if we had, uh, just that, uh, just that to, to go on, just that, you know, we, we just going to make it through today. And, uh, that's a life without hope. We, we, we're going to make it through tomorrow. We're going to make it through tomorrow night. It's getting ready to storm here. It's lightning and rumbling. You can probably hear it and it's starting to rain pretty heavy. Um, you know, us being in quarantine and being on lockdown, uh, everybody's griping and complaining. You know, the devil may be saying, yes, I got them all locked up. I got them all. I shut down the churches and I locked them up. But he made a very big mistake because when he locked us up, he locked us up with Jesus. You know, it's just like there in the days of uh, Egypt, whenever that the uh, Passover was taking place, you know, the death angel was coming by. And, uh, you know, when he saw the blood over top of the doorpost and uh, on the, uh, the lentil, he would pass on by. And my friend, I'm telling you for a fact, this is a, a fact. That if the blood's on the outside, then there is a lamb on the inside. And I, I thank Jesus for that, that we have Jesus Christ on our inside and that he lives with us, leads us and guides us. Uh, don't be upset, uh, you know, about everything going on today. You and I, uh, we, we, we can be happy. Just, just bear your load. And if you feel like you're going to be crushed under it, remember, you, you don't bear it alone. You're yoked up with Jesus. He can help you. And if that's not enough, my friend, then, you know, don't be afraid to call upon somebody else's name for help and for uh, for strength. Listen, uh, I love you, and uh, I, I 
truly hope and pray that we can we're working on something at our little church there at Hamilton Glades Free Will Baptist we want to make some phone calls and I'm going to see if we can get us a parking lot service uh, scheduled at somewhere and uh, because I miss you all so bad I can't stand it we still can't get out and communicate and fellowship like we want to but at least we can look across the driveway and see each other and uh, maybe I won't be trapped in the house here where I got to sit in one spot and preach in front of my phone I'll be able to cut loose like I did in church and uh, have the liberty there maybe brother Jimmy can come in and just preach up a storm with me I love you so much I really do and I, I appreciate the fact that Jesus Christ died for my sins and died for yours this isn't the end this is just the beginning God bless you and we love you pray that you would have a nice day